Hi, right. it's nice to see you. Hi there, good to see you. Um, look, first off, I feel like every week the games get bigger. Um, last season, you only lost one game at home in the league. This season, you've only won one game at home in the league. What's happened at Turf Moor this season? It's a different league. I think, <laughs> you know, the, the, the easiest way to say it is last season, this season, it's, it's just a different league. And, um, but it doesn't take away the fact that we'd like to win at home. We'd like to win more. We've been close a few times and, um, and, and Saturday is an, is an opportunity for us. You talk about the closeness and now dropped 20 points from winning positions this season. When you look at the table, do you think what could have been? Yeah, I mean, it's always been said it's the hardest thing is to score the first goal. And, um, and you know, that's not been a problem for us. But I think this season, um, I don't know, you guys have maybe looked into the statistics more than I have for this, but it looks like it's a striker's league at the moment. Um, I don't think we're any exception to that and and teams in this league and that makes it also the best league in, in the world in my opinion teams find a way to score and um, we have to do the same and score more Has that been the biggest problem and just is that your biggest frustration I suppose this season just not scoring enough goals No and, and I wouldn't express it as frustration I think we've gone through this and we've um, we got on with stuff um, and it, it's just, you know, when, when, when you are where you are, you could name a number of things and you can start listing things out. I, I don't think that's the point for us right now. We've, um, we've been close, but, but not been able to, to get the points over the line. And, and that's all we have to focus on now. You do have a forward in good form in David Datro Fafana. Just how good is he? Just allow me to make that statement a little bit later, but he's, 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 he's on he's on track for where he's at in his age and um, and and obviously the fact that Chelsea bought him is because they thought they must have thought he was a big talent. I, I followed him um, some time before actually he went to Chelsea, so I knew him. I spoke to him before, and um, and it was nice to pick it up. And actually, um, we need we just needed his profile, so it's it's been good for us. But whatever he did against West Ham, we'll need if he's done it. Once and he played well against Liverpool as well. We'll need it another ten times. There's no other way. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Vincent. Um, Hi are there any fresh injury concerns ahead of the game at the weekend? Um, and also an update on Hanno and Masengo and also Jordan Bayer. Um, no fresh injury concerns. Maybe a few positive surprises. We'll see. And. Um, now, most of the players that we that have been important for us this season are close to return, are doing well, and um, hopefully the international break will will kind of sort of see our squad uh, bolster again. Into the last ten games of the season, what is it that you want to see from your players in the remaining games? Not not too dis not too dissimilar from the Bournemouth and the West Ham performers and. My thing is, um, we have we need the three points. We need we need goals. We need to to win games, and but I can't I can't sit here and say that I haven't that the, the lads haven't given every, everything. Sometimes they've come short, and sometimes um, they've, they've, it's because we haven't played well. But most of the time, they've given everything, and 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 it's been close. So you know these these type of um, situations they can often turn you, you can turn misfortune into something you know that gives you results and we just have to do everything we can at least mentally to believe that that moment can be tomorrow you know defeats last time you met Brentford what did you take learnings wise from that game yeah that was one of the bad games we played this season and it was um I, I think it was one of the turning points as well I don't know if Bournemouth was before or after we went away to Bournemouth as well but definitely there were two bad games for us and and after that I think every game except for the Palace and, and Arsenal performance we, we we competed in every game since those games and I think we changed our our intensity a little bit we um, we, we changed a few things as well tactically we sharpened up it's, it's not given us enough results but but he got us in games and he got us a few results and um, and hopefully um, you know, it'll show that we've progressed from that day. 
When the goals have come for you this season, 85% of them have been from open play. Would you like to see your team making more of the opportunities that you have from set pieces? Um, yeah, do you know what? It's, it's the way, it's, 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 it's how you want to look at it. So the positive thing is that we, we do score goals from, from open play and, and, and that's not an easy thing to do. Um, when it comes to the set play situation, if you analyze what's happened for us on set pieces, attacking wise, we've actually been fairly dangerous. So our, our chance creation from set pieces is, is absolutely, you know, it's, it's probably above most of the teams we're competing with at the moment. The, the, the issue is, um, and it's a degree of sometimes quality, sometimes timing of players in their careers. The issue for us is when that header is a clear header on the back post or in the front post, it's to put it in. It's not being create the, the issue is not being creating chances of set plays. We've had plenty, plenty of chances of set plays. We're actually a dangerous team on set plays. We'd like to convert a little bit more, but again, it's the same. It could be next next game. That's how you have to believe at least. Thank you. Thank you. Scott, Vincent, you say it's a striker's league. Yeah. Can you expand on that a little bit for me, please? It's just every game I'm watching. I'm I'm not seeing seeing a lot of defenders handling their opponents at the moment. Doesn't matter who you play. If you watch the Tottenham strikers, the amount of times they get in. If you watch every team, um, and and I think it's good for football. But there's more runs in behind. It's also a little bit more difficult to just sit back and defend because teams are a little bit, you know, teams tactically understand how they need to create overloads, how they need to also keep you in, pin you in, and and every team has got quite good principles of reacting when they lose the ball, recovering the ball, transition again. So that counter press, it used to be only Liverpool doing it. And and and, and then obviously um, City was one of the teams that was doing it as well. But now every team counter presses. So that means as well, if you just invite them to come, um, it, it's, hard to, it's harder to get out than it used to be, even on transitions. So then, I guess by default, teams are going more aggressive and pressing higher and they've got the profiles to do because every player can run 12K, 12 k, 12 and a half K, 1,200 meter high intensity, two to four to five on some of them, six, 700 meter sprint. And so, um, yeah, and, and I'm watching throughout the league and, you know, you got teams like Bournemouth, they got guys like Solanke and Semenyo up front. You've got teams like uh, Fulham, they've got a uh, tremendous striker, the big Mexican fella, um, Jimenez, unbelievable, yeah. So, but they've got like proper high quality players in, in up front, Wolverhampton have got Cunha and so on and so on. And the spaces get bigger and um, because you have to, but the strikers are, in my opinion, you know, uh, of a high of a high caliber. And, and you know, you just have to look Tomorrow, you, you've got um, in that game, you've got Ivan Tony up front and Visa and Buemo. And also, we've got a few guys who can hurt the opposition team. So, but every team has that. Brighton have got Ferguson and so And you keep going. And it's, it's, I'm kind of expanding as I'm mentioning it to you now because I'm, I do remember probably as I was playing, where, you know, teams could have an advantage defensively and, and, and exploit that. It, it just doesn't seem that way to me anymore. I don't know, maybe you guys will analyze it in more depth and say, look, you know, that's not true. But when I look at every game, you know, it's, it, it seems to be that way. So do you think the, the art of defending, the desire to be difficult to play and difficult to beat and be proud to keep a clean sheet, are those things perhaps waning a little bit in the Premier League? No, absolutely not. I don't think there's a, a lack of desire. I don't think there's a lack of... In, in fact, defending now is harder because you're defending bigger spaces. You're uh, more often exposed yourself against these these high quality strikers. And um, But it's, it's... I don't think, you know, coaches in general, if, if everyone does it, it means there's a reason why they're doing it. And, and they probably do it because um, the real zonal deep defending kind of, um, um, how would I say, at this moment in time, tactics have for many coaches maybe not given what they wanted to. And, and it goes in trend. It might change again in a few years, but any team I play, we play against now is, um, it's, it's kind of full on. And, and, it's, it's, and I mean, it's everyone. And, you know, that's what makes this league so, so good.
and you have to remember my mindset is never i'm not philosophical in that aspect i'm just witnessing it and i'm staying what i see um maybe you see the same thing I spoke to josh cullen this week and he was spoke speaking about this the um, trying to look beyond just this season look at the bigger picture the cycle of the football club where it's at and whether it's staying up or going down whether it's premier league football next season or not it's about making this club competitive in the long term yeah is that quite nice to hear that from one of your one of your players but I think everyone in the club understands that, you know. That's why we, we don't get dragged into anything other than the next game. That's that's all that matters. And, you know, we, we've probably stated this. I think what we've done is we've done the right thing by stating it at, at the beginning of the season consistently and in moments where we had time to reflect. But um, now we're in the middle of the season. The, the I can guarantee you that the only priority for us is to make the most of the next 10 games we have and then um, at the end we can always reflect again and um, but probably that's why the club has been fairly just consistent and calm. Got a really good performance on Sunday and a good point wasn't it at West Ham you're within 10 points of safety you've got Forest to play at home they could yet be deductive points there's still a really interesting period to come I think isn't it this season? That's you know I, I try not to look too much at, you don't. at the <laughs> The other teams, and you know that, but I, I, I do look for, I, I, my life, my life is like this. I look for any opportunity to, 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 to do something special, and and any season, you know, this season can still be that. So why, why throw away this opportunity? It's ten games, and you never know. Um, we, we, we experienced something fantastic last year, but there's absolutely no reason why the next 10 games cannot give us the same feeling back. And, and that's how we have to approach it. Would that be a bigger achievement from this? Yes. This, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, hmm, having said that. <laughs> no, but it's, do you know what? If, if, if we had came down with the parachute money and if we had came down with a squad, I, 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 for some reason, I looked at a squad planning from May 2022. I had two players. Let that sink in, two players, and we built from that. So um, to the point where now we have stories about why does he play or he doesn't play, but we built from having two players. Everybody else was leaving, and we had, um, you know, we we, we managed to uh, to to re-sign Jack Cork, and you know we had Goodmanson that, that we keep that, that we kept, and and Jay Rodriguez, and and that was it. And there was a couple of guys that were injured, and the contracts were running out, but. Um, we we built from from nothing with no parachute money, um, yeah. That that's a pretty pretty decent achievement. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Hi, Vinny. Um, what have you made of, of Brentford this season? Are you surprised they are sort of in that, that lower part of the of the of the division? It's just a tough league. I've not I've not paid too much attention to other teams in that sense, and um, and they've missed the main striker for a long time. So we know the impact that can have. Um, can I ask you about uh, Amin Al-Dakil, not seen much of him the last few weeks. Is he fit and no, available? No, injured, injured. injured. He's been injured since um, since he was out of the squad. I think his last game was, was it Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah, I think so. So, which was actually a really good performance, but he's just been injured. Is he one of those ones that could be a surprise return on Saturday? He's not on the surprise return <laughs> list, no. Um, yeah. Obviously, after, after this game, you got the international break. What sort of plans do you have for, that, for those uh, two weeks, 10 days, two weeks? Um, pretty standard. You, you usually use the first week to um, maybe review the last trench of games, last 10 games, last eight games and um, build towards the, the next nine. And usually during the international break, you always have also an eye on preseason, all these type of things, but nothing more than normal. And then build up to Chelsea when we recover our international players. Hi Vincent, just Hi. Um, you're talking about that squad rebuild, um, to be a number of core players, players that have been here a long time, their contracts are up this summer, have you had any conversations with them about possible renewals, any, any progress on that? Well, we'll have the conversation for sure, but the timing of it, you know, it's probably not going to be in the next two days, but for sure we'll have the conversation and, and we've done it in the past, we've with other players. So. Is, is that something you could use the international break for or is it something that needs to wait till the end of the season and you know the, the league status? No, well, usually I use the international break to think about those issues 
and then I will come with a um, a way to to handle those issues in that period of time. Thank but you. Ask me in two weeks' time, and I'll have a very definite answer. Thank you.